What is good? Boom, quick crack. What you got for me on the Waterloo? On the NA. Ooh, Ooh spicy pop with the Waterloo. A little grape for ya. A little grape for ya. Little little lean. Mm. I brought the walk to Jay Wayne's. All right. We got a little bye bye. Got your host, I am C Myers over here. Casey Myers coming at you. Got old Matt Foreman. We are. We are uh, not terrible. Winning. Not winning. Sean Clifford. That was not his fault. I know that was wasn't. not his I fault. I know it wasn't his fault. He just sticks. Fair. He's fine. He's That's, fine. He's, exactly. He's, he's, he's a fine, fine college quarterback. He's fine. Right. Yeah, I agree. That's what happens when you're 40 and still playing college football. Yeah. So, today, we got no Jason. We got no Big Co. But we got rookies. Oh, we got plenty of rookies. We got rookies. All right. So, we're going to... We, we jumped into a little rookie uh, report maybe two, three weeks ago. We're going to hit you off with a couple more of those guys. Just check in with, with the rookies. Talk about what they've been up to, how we view them the rest of the season. Maybe get a little uh, trade talk in there uh, near the end of it. And, uh, you know, we got Alec Pierce today. Uh, we got Kenneth Walker. Ken. Ken. We got Wandell Robinson. We got Greg. Dulcich. Dulcich. Been, Dulcich. Uh, been going Dulcich on that one. And uh, old Mr. Bellinger. Mr. Bellinger. We got that one correct, right? Oh, yeah. All right. No pronunciation guide needed. Let's hop in to Alec Pierce. But before we do, go ahead and like, subscribe, comment below if you're enjoying all the co- on the on all the. Uh, what are we doing here? What are we putting out? The YouTube week after week. Yeah, what the content? If you're enjoying the content, make sure to uh, do all that. Make it come right to your little fingertips, so you don't have to go searching for it. All right. So today we're going to start with Alec Pierce, coming off a big week. Uh, back to back big weeks. Back to back big weeks. Routes run one through four, uh, seventy five. Route weeks five through six, eighty four. Yeah. So big number there. Now to be noted, he did have a concussion week one, um, and then missed week two. So that averages into that week four, but still a, yeah. a big number uh, in, in jump up from weeks the first four weeks to five and six here. Also, Doolin being out has helped that as well too. For sure, um, but. Pierce is, you know, badly needed over there for to give Matt Ryan a little extra pizzazz. Now, as most weeks, is Matt Ryan going to have 58 pass attempts and complete 42 of them? Probably not. Um, I think old JT being out may have contributed to right. just a little bit. Deion Jackson, as I believe is his name. Oh, the, I think he had the top. I think he had the top RB RB week. It, it, yeah, um, he had 10 targets. Pittman had 16, Paris Campbell had 11, and Alec Pierce had seven in this last week. Um, so Paris Campbell has been out there a good bit. Um, yeah, he's definitely playing over Pierce. He's He's been his snap share through week one is 74%, 89%, 81%, 66%, because I think he might have went off the field there, 91 and 100% uh, yeah. for Paris Campbell there. Yeah. So still seeming edging him out um, as, as the number – two specifically week after week but the alec pierce uh trending up the last two weeks for sure uh 58.9 percent of the snaps last week and 71.6 again probably somewhat maybe some dual and missing and then again a lot more passing downs jt's in there you might even out back to yeah you know a little bit more they like different tight end packages and and they do a lot of different stuff with a lot of different tight ends yeah but they got, they're rotating those three tight ends in there with what you just with, with what you have here those those three guys are probably your three best pass catchers paris campbell um whether you like him or not um alec pierce and obviously, obviously Pittman's Pittman. the dog there um, and then you had 10 catches from the running back which you know jt or you know sometimes naheen would probably fit, go in there and, yeah. and get a little and, and jt would get a little but nevertheless what do you got for us on some Alec Pierce? So I found this interesting that Pierce has the third highest PFF wide receiver grade of any wide receiver on deep targets of over 20 plus yards. And he trails only Diggs and Gabe Davis. That's pretty strong. Yeah. 99.6 wide receiver grade and a perfect pass rating when targeted 
20 yards downfield. So a ni- I think he's going to be a nice compliment to Pittman's playing that, um, uh, that possession receiver. He's got the A dot over Campbell as well, too. I know that, uh, I know old Jay Wayne loves the A dot mm-hmm. stat. Um, but it, I mean, he's got an A dot of 12, and Campbell has an A dot of 5.2. So, right. Over double that. Obviously. Campbell can, can can take the shot, but Campbell is also going to be that guy who is typically going to be the little yeah. bit shorter of an A dot. Yeah, he, he's playing the slot. Right. Give him give him the give him a run. Give him a behind the line of scrimmage pass. Give him some screens. Yeah. A couple of middle of the field crossers. Um, but yeah, Alec Pierce has the speed, the size uh, to go up and just you know big boy some some D backs. He also you know played against Sauce Gardner uh, in a lot of uh, practices there. Yeah. So yeah, get yeah, him yeah. ready for. For the NFL, a little bit there. Also, Pierce is quite athletic. Four four one forty, a vertical of forty point five, and a broad of tw- one hundred twenty nine inches. So, definitely a athletic guy. Was a was a mid second rounder for me, and and you know I, I I'd probably keep him around the same. I you know hasn't done quite enough for me to really bump him up too much. One of the other guys we talk about right in, in a couple Wandell probably had him a little higher than than Pierce. Um, by I, the end of my draft, but you know, yeah, and I, I don't know that I would necessarily swap those two, you know, just yet for me. But agreed, agreed. I need a little more on. I Wandale. think Pierce kind of stayed where he was at for me, and Wandale kind of came up with how much he was being used and talked about with the, with the uh, with the Giants. So right, and like you said, week one, not a whole lot going on for Pierce, but week two, nine point one fantasy points. Week three, twelve fantasy points. Week four, uh, sorry, miss week two. So week three, nine point one. Week four, uh, 12.0. Week five, 16.1. Um, and then this past week, 13.9. Uh, got you a little um, touchdown there to to really bring you home. Big touchdown for, for, the, uh, for the Colts there. Yeah. I know a lot of gambling folks were uh, a little – all I needed to do was kick that field goal. I know Big Co. had, had the uh, Jags, I believe, in the Super Contest, and they still would have covered – um, if, if they would have just kicked the field goal so that and 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 the Colts still would have won but they got the touchdown from Pierce to really seal the deal yeah um, so some people might have been a little upset about Pierce's touchdown but some fantasy owners were probably Sucks to excited. suck yeah um, so what what do you how do you view Pierce going forward here is he in your lineup weekly is he not in your lineup weekly I mean you got bye weeks and some yeah, injuries I, yeah. mounting yeah I think if you got some 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 injuries and some bye weeks coming up here I think he's worth a play um, especially in some more favorable matchups for the Colts, but I don't think he's a weekly starter just yet. But I think he's worth a pickup in case something happens. I think he's got the shot to usurp that role from Campbell. Right, and I mean, you know, they he, he, he's been at least out there enough over the last couple of games and it increasing from, you know, 46 to 58 to 71 percent of the snap share. All good signs for him. Um, and like I said, it does seem like Matt Ryan is is building a nice little rapport with him. Yeah. Um, watch, I think the I think the concern is how much eleven personnel they're going to play. Right, and I don't have that number in front of me. I should have looked that up on on how much typical. But I mean, if Matt Ryan's going to be more comfortable in eleven, then maybe that's what they should be doing, because that's going to be the ticket to success for them, because they they need to do something. But you know. I'm, Cer- sure, I'm sure JT can run out of 11. If you can oh, get the boxes unstacked yeah. for him and be exactly, able to do exactly. uh, some different things. What McVay was doing for a while there with the running backs. Right. Um, and I'm not sure what the stack box numbers are, but I'm, you know, if JT's out there. He's, he's one of the best players on the field. So you're always uh, playing a cautionary tale on where he is. Um, what would, what would be, you, you paid a two for Pierce. So you can't really trade a two for Pierce right now. You know, that's, that's probably, you're not going to get that same cost, especially since he's been okay. You probably yeah. got to add. A, would you do two twos? I think it might Pierce. be a little rich for me still. I think that's, I think he's at cost for me still. Okay, so you wouldn't really. Add, would you do a two and a three? I consider it depending if I needed a wide receiver or not. But I don't think he's a. I don't think he's a must buy for me right now, especially with the back to back, back to back solid weeks. Um, I think there might the window may be temporarily closed, but we'll see right. if, what happens when JT comes back. Might have a little bit of a dip. Especially if they're going back to that 12 personnel. I like all these guys that we're about to talk about today as buy candidates. And like you said, none of them are maybe the best buy candidate right now. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, you still send some stuff out, get some feelers, see what's going on. Uh, but I would be fine with adding a little bit to that. Would you, would you, did you have Rashad White ahead of Pierce in this class? I mean, I still think I'd rather have Pierce. 
over white. I wasn't a big Rashad white guy. Right. This year, I think I'd rather have Pierce straight I, up. I agree. I'm um, just trying to find some other guys that, you know, Dotson, you're probably still taking. I'm still taking Dotson over Pierce. Dotson over Pierce. Yeah. How about Watson? Mm. Mm. You almost have to go Pierce right now. I think now, you have right? to. Yeah, I think you have to. Even though that might be sacrilege by in a couple of weeks, but I mean, unhealthy and just doesn't seem yeah. to have the. Any, any Does, he doesn't have the Mrs. Jones going on, you know, no, or the no. Mr. Jones, however you want to look at that. Yeah, they don't have, have a thing the, going on. Doesn't have the Ian Rappaport with uh, Rogers there either. No. Um, so you would you would you make that swap if you could right now, Christian Watson for yeah. Alec Pierce? Yeah, I mean, I I don't think I I mean I don't think that the uh, I don't think that the the Pierce owner would want to do that in that scenario. But I mean, no, to give me the opportunity. Not, I, I think I would. Some people might still be pretty hyped on. Christian Watson because you haven't seen him yet and you yeah know, the, the only thing you really have in your memory bank is either an end around touchdown or a or a drop ball a drop ball in the first pass of the season um, so he's still showing you a little explosiveness yeah. um all right let's try to find some other guys that you might trade for um how about uh Juju no I'm taking Juju you're keeping Juju yeah for sure because of the big big week this week, or just I think I think he's still a good player. Yeah. He's still fairly young. He's still playing in that offense. I, I think I'd rather have Juju. Romeo was probably around uh, Pierce in the draft. That's the thing. I think you gotta go with Dubs. I think yeah. Dubs is probably a two two a two twos right now worth of value. Yeah, I, I, I'd be okay with that. How about your boy? If you could turn your boy Jacoby Myers into Pierce. Is a later asset. I mean, they probably weren't really that far apart, actually. Jacoby in remains underrated yeah. every single year, and he just gets you wide receiver three value week in, week out, if if not an upside for more. Right. I'm taking Jacoby. I love Ooh. Jacoby Myers. I'll, I'll, I'll swap that in for Pierce. Okay. I'll swap that out for Pierce. It's, a, you know, uh, you were right with, with Jacoby being underrated and, and just whilst healthy and out there, he is – a nice flex option or a wide receiver three option for you. And, and just, you know, all this, we got a touchdown. Was it last week that we yeah, got the touchdown? Last week we hadn't had touchdown. a touchdown in a while. Yeah. Um, and you know, if you can all, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with Mac and, and Zappy, but it seems like yeah, you're okay. Either yeah. Either way. way, either way, he's fine. I mean, he, last week with Zappy, he just had, was just peppered. Right. How about, uh, how about our guy? Uh, would you trade, like Nico Collins. I think I'd rather have. I knew you were gonna say Nico. I'd rather have Pierce. How about Nico in a two? No, oh, Nick, give me Nico in the two for Nico sure. For two? sure. For sure. All right. All right. How about how about one of these tight ends that we're gonna talk about right? I right still now? think I'd rather have. If it's is it tight end premium? We could. I'm always gonna try to play premium. Would you rather have uh, Dulcich or Pierce? One game from Dulcich. Give me. Pierce. Yeah, I would tend to agree that I'm going to lean. I like what I've seen from Pierce. Bellinger? I don't know. I might take Bellinger. <clears throat> I, I mean, there's I, nothing in the nothing. Yeah, I think with, I'm still leaning Pierce over both of those. I guys. think I think it's a toss up there. I think it's a toss up, but I, I don't think you get wrong either way. Um, Obviously, you know, I had uh, Isaiah Spiller ahead of um. Oh. Alec Pierce here. Pierce. So Pierce. I mean, you got to go Pierce at this Have point. To. There's not, it's not even Spiller a hasn't even, I think Spiller right. might finally be active this week right. with Josh Kelly injured, but it's been a weird whew. roller coaster. And, you know, we could see, maybe we see Spiller on the field and it's like, all right, this looks good. Sony looked good, though. Sony, Sony looked good Sony on Monday. For the first time That's in a minute, Sony yeah. looked good. Um, Wish he was on the Rams still. Probably way too far away here. And, I, you know, just throw, maybe I'll try one or two more here. Um, Kyron Williams getting a little bit of love right now. Oh, Would you yeah. rather have nah. Kyron and a two or Pierce? I'm a big Kyron guy, and I think I still got to stick with Pierce. But yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to. Just two games with P two games with Kyron in there scoring. If he can score anywhere near the twelve fantasy point threshold, and looking all right though. And it's, yeah, he's going to go through the roof. Yeah. I mean, and there's yeah. plenty of people out there saying don't waste a roster spot on a slow, shitty guy. And it's like, hey, the Rams are the Rams were in on him to draft him. They were in on him over the summer. 
he got hurt once and then came back and then they were in on him again. Like the Rams are basically telling you, hey, I don't know what's going on with no, the I don't know either. Cam Akers he's, over he's there. Gone. He's gone. They seem to be okay with shipping him out of there and they're going to get Kyron back probably after the bye. They, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think he's, I think that um, uh, McVay said they're going to get seven. Ky- Is that Ky- this week? Yeah, they're on a bye this week. I think he, they're going to get a ton of guys back after the bye. So watch out for the Rams after the bye. Should be getting Brian Allen back. He's a starting center. So that should be helpful getting some more of that. Get a, get a little back. run game going. <sighs> I mean, something. I mean, this is the first time they've had a 100-yard rushing game all season. I'll throw one more rookie at you because I know you liked him, and Jason liked him as well. Would you rather have uh, Zamir or Pierce? It's Pierce for me. Yeah, I think it's Pierce for me. I think I'd want, yeah. But I don't think that you have to do that deal. I think if I could get Zamir and if I could get Zamir in a second for Pierce, I'm doing that easily. Okay. I'd probably stick Pierce. Um, all right, I'll throw two more running backs at you, a little more veterans. J Rob right now or Pierce. Trying to trying J Rob all of a sudden all to, numbers trending in the wrong direction. Trying to sell J Rob in a league that yeah. I just traded for ETN for. Um I don't know. Uh, Fuck it. Give me Pierce. All right. All right. Where are you at there? Are you still sticking with J-Rob? I, I I think I'm ready to just... You probably should, but yeah. I think I think you'd be... If you've been holding the bag the last couple of weeks and J-Rob just trending in the wrong direction, I think you'd be pretty stoked to get Pierce. Yeah. But, I mean, it seems like you should hold and wait until you can get a little more. Funny thing is, is I got... I traded in that... In the, it was in that league I was telling you guys about in, the, in our group chat. I actually traded... Um, Dalvin Cook for Travis Etienne and Alec Pierce. Got Pierce's throwing. All right. All right. Last last quick one here. Khalil Herbert or Pierce? Herbert may be a year away, and there's still some question marks on whether he will have the whole backfield to himself next year. And they're, you know, just wanted to get some running backs involved. I think Herbert's a good one. Um, because I have Herbert as about a mid-second value right now, probably a little higher on Herbert than the consensus, but I think he's gonna. I think he could be really good next I year. Think, I think that's kind of where I, was, I think trading wise, I think that's a pretty even swap yeah. value wise right now. I think it just depends on team the need there. Beer holder. Yeah, I think it just depends on whether you need a running back or wide receiver more. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm probably sticking Pierce, but I mean, you could be. I think, I think if what if Monty goes. Depending on how Pierce's season, I mean, is finished. there a chance that Monty gets traded this this year? I don't think so. I, I think don't understand why ride. they wouldn't. Right, if they could get something for him, I mean, maybe it, they would. Yeah, I mean, I, like I said this yeah. in one of the. Why aren't the Why don't the Rams just call about David Montgomery? He's probably cheaper than CMC. Yeah, I mean, just as a rental, just cleared some cap up. Yeah, that's not the worst thought. Yeah. Um, and or you're I, for the Buffalo Bills, you know what I mean? Yeah, Singletary has been ha- he's been all right, but I think David Montgomery is a superior player than yeah than Singletary is. If you have Montgomery, I'd be fine with trying to figure out how to get Herbert. Yeah, and trying to maybe move Pierce to get Herbert, and then you'd have two backs come next season most yeah. likely, or maybe even this season. On one of my quarter point per carry teams, I have I pick, I got Herbert off the waiver wire last year. I spent a whole bunch of fab for him. Pierce definitely a big target for me to to try to go acquire though, and I have yeah. been for a few weeks. Hasn't really worked out quite yet, but um, all right, let's let's move on from Alec Pierce. Let's close the door on him. Okay. Um, and let's go back to um, let's get our let's our, get our guy Kenny Walker in on this one. Old Kenny three sticks. All right, so we'll move to Kenny Walker here, and now a lot of these guys, like I said. Alec Pierce missed a game. He's probably played the most out of just about anybody. Bellinger's been on the field yeah, a lot. But, yeah. you know, a lot of these guys, Wandell, uh, Dolchich, and and Kenny here, you know, definitely kind of had guys in front of them or hurt or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, you know, not a whole lot of data to really comb through on Kenny here. Sure. Um, but the, the stuff that is here is rather fun. It is. Tantalizing. Indubitably. Um, so what do you what do you got for Kenny who, you know, big – a lot of love for Kenny on this pod was was the one two for me and Jay Wayne. I don't think I don't know if he was quite there for you as a what, RB two uh, in in, uh, in the rookie draft was the one two for for us. Um, he was he was up there. Um, 
he was definitely up there for top me. Top four, probably. He was definitely top four. Yeah, definitely top four. Um, I think the coolest stat for Walker is that he he has 22 missed tackles forced on 44 carries, which yeah. is absurd. I think he's like four, third or fourth in the, in the entire league. Did you say just on, on 44 attempts? On 44 yeah. attempts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. The last yeah. the last uh, two weeks, um, Damian Pierce and Kenny Walker, 17 forced missed tackles and, and Kenny Walker, 14. Uh, so two rookies just doing the damn thing. You know I got to get Pierce in on the show one way or another. Uh, Pierce leader in the clubhouse. If you have hate in your heart, let it That's out. what I'm saying. I mean, this is how I... I can feel it <laughs> down in my plums. <laughs> How do you feel about, how do you feel about, um... Double hate. Yeah, exactly. Hate, hate, hate. Lows. Lows entirely. I mean, I have to stick, I mean, at this point, I have to just stick to my guns <laughs> and just hope that this is just... A little, uh, little more news today of Pierce getting, gotta yeah, get 20 carries. 20 again. carries. I mean, I, like I said, Pierce was one of those guys where I was okay being the wrong one. I yeah. don't, I don't, yeah, yeah. I, I think... I think he's a fine player. I was probably a little too low on him. Absolutely. I'll, I I will at least admit that. So, I guess I don't have any shares of him, so... Yeah. Yeah. I, I me mean neither. Not really. I'm, uh, redraft, I do, but no... no. Uh, I think I have a redraft share, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, week six, Kenny Walker. Um, he had 23 touches, 110 total yards, a touchdown, 19 PPR points. Yeah, three targets. Um, 69% of the snaps, 91% of the uh, running back rush attempts 12 missed tackles force led the nfl uh at 73 yards after contact 3.48 per uh that was a that that exact reading was a john o'leary twitter post that i saw so i figured that was all the things that i needed in one go round. and rather than go to pff and find that i just you know your one-stop out. shop john o'leary shout out, shout to, out to john um so you know very impressive in week one and and you know all the the aesthetics of it were were pleasing to the eye as well um yeah you know, a nice td run from him um and then just some some good powerful running some some explosion i called him magician a magician before in the draft process of how he can really get himself into a little position and then he f- usually finds a way to squirt out of there uh for for a big play at the end of that um uh, but but man kenny's been fun and like you said the the there's been there were some targets before Rashad Penny went down. Now, not a ton of targets this week, but all I'm asking for of a guy who's getting 91% of the rush attempts is three to four checkdowns. I don't need yeah. you to be super involved in the passing game, but if I can get three to four a week, and maybe you can turn it into something just like Damian Pierce has been getting some. They haven't really turned into anything, but he's you know he's logging four, five, six yeah. catches a game. You know, fine with that. My only concern with that is on Homer. I think Homer can come back and... A week or two, so um, interested to see how that affects things in the receiving category. But I mean, he so he so she should still dominate the early down work. Yeah, for a surprisingly fun Seahawks offense. Right, right, and I think you know might, maybe the difference between him and Damian Pierce is the Seahawks offense seems a little more literate than yeah. the uh, uh, Texans offense. So you know some more opportunities and and. Uh, for for Kenny to get in the end zone, yeah, um, but still going to play in a lot of crooked number kind of games where they you know get field goals instead of touchdowns. Geno's seemed to you know cool off a little bit this week. Yeah, I mean he's not playing the Lions defense, so that that tends to also help. in division. You know, yeah, that divisions just like any division, every team has their bugaboo in there. NFC and, best, yeah, <laughs> they were, but not so much uh, right yeah, now. It doesn't yikes. seem like. <laughs> so I mean, we talked about this. Um, a little bit in in the prior weeks you know if kenny gets his shot and balls out you know good luck it, it, it we're probably at a two first minimum for kenny walker right now two first i think so i'd be cashing out you'd cash out yep. for kenneth walker yep see i don't know man that's this is we're, you know penny's out of here they they got you got the second round capital on them which is good yeah um and and you got a team who isn't as bad as we thought they would be and you know, could have a quarterback and could have a quarterback upgrade as soon as next year right you know and even if it's not a rookie if it's just somebody else that's floating around yeah you know you know maybe you rolled you know i don't exactly know what they're gonna do but i mean i mean gino hasn't been terrible so right and you know it's it's not the absolute dumpster fire that we thought it would now it could tail it off could, here it could, and, it could. and get ugly um but 
you know, for me, I'm I'm fine with paying that price. Um, yeah, I think that's too much for me. I've tried to 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 get it. I tried to get Kenny Walker previous to this game, like through the and what were obviously you, what the were week. You, what were you offering? I offered AJ Dillon in a first, and that was declined. Declined quickly. <laughs> Not sure I agree with that one. I offered Montgomery and uh, Mike Evans. Eh, I could see that. For Kenny Walker and a two. I mean, the uh, okay, yeah, I think you're at, I think your ask was a bit heavy there. What's that? I mean, Monty still has value, and Evans is still. This is a guy who's trying to win. He's trying to win right now. I mean, obviously, Kenny Walker's yeah. you know doing the damn thing. But. Yeah. So you wouldn't you wouldn't take Kenny and Evans straight up on a winning roster right now to basically a two for one to get a, a an, an extra twenty points a week to fifteen points a week. From for trading out of Kenny Walker, you're hanging on. Yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, I think I I think I'd stick with Walker in the second over Evans and Montgomery, but Dylan in the first is is easy for me. Dylan in the first. I've sent I sent two firsts, didn't get them. I just I just think there's I I know that Jay Wayne's not here, but I just think there's so much. There's so many. I don't want to say better players, but players who offer a little bit more upside. Than Walker and the see, receiving game yeah, that are coming out see, next I, year. I just that's fine. I just I I disagree on how, he's just a really good player and I no, don't, I, I don't, I don't need yeah. him to catch that many balls. I, I, he's proficient in the pass game. Whereas I I just I think the part that really drains me and I know it really drains him is just like because he didn't catch a bunch of balls in college. There's no way that he can and like he can he's come out here and caught some balls and been fine at it. So like that I'm good. Like that's fine. That's fine. Um. I think he might he could catch thirty balls. And you know, I think I think that's Zeke Zeke the Zeke model is always fine with me. You get you give me a bunch of the attempts and then you get if you can get if you can catch forty to fifty balls a year, that's fine. I don't think he's a forty fifty pass catcher Who? though. Walker. Why? I just don't I, I just don't see it. Yeah. See I, I just if he's getting three targets a game, he's probably catching two of them. Why I isn't mean, he catching all three if they're all backfield checkdowns and then some some weeks you get more? It's two seconds, two first. I'm easily cashing out, easily, mm. easily. See, I'm all in. I'm going the opposite direction. With uh, for me, it's the it's the it's the state of the NFL running back right now that we have in the league that we talked about with Jay Wake on the older running backs, and we haven't got the changing of the guard We're and all ha- that. I think the changing I, of the guard think is coming. Very it's coming. Soon. I, it certainly is. And I, but I think Kenny Walker's pretty much as good as all of those guys, except for maybe one or two of them. Nah. Agree to you disagree. Know, I mean, is he as good as Bijan? No, 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 probably not. Is he as good as Jamar Gibbs? I think so. Is, I think Jamar Gibbs, Gibbs is like 5'9", 200. Kenny Walker is 5'9", 210. No, he's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he is. No, no, he is. Just like Big Co last week. I, I can read it right yeah. there. I don't, I don't, but I, Gibbs is significantly smaller than that, is he not? Is he Is he 200? Um. Well, I I know that the I know that the and, and Alabama I, site's gonna lie to me. Uh, right, right. So it's almost useless. I mean, and I'm not trying. I think Gibbs is very good. Um, and most people are screaming that Kenny Walker's not even can't hold the candle to Gibbs, but he's the hot new thing. And um, yeah. he's five eleven two hundred. Five eleven two hundred. So he's probably more. He's probably five ten one ninety. Right. So I mean, which is fine. He's. And he's a great receiving back, a, a a fantastic receiving back. But I think Kenny Walker, you know, outdoes him in the the main workhorse role type of deal. Um, and then you know the Seahawks are a team that I think are fine with using him in that form and pushing him as as being, hey, we got the workhorse, we're fine with that. And, and I'm we'll not check sure it he's down. a workhorse. I think he's definitely the the one A of the situation. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm with a full complement of. I, I guess I'm just saying, you know, the Seahawks are somebody, are a team that I that I have confidence in giving one guy 20 carries a game. Where there's definitely organizations where, yeah, it, you're a little more hard pressed to find them. He's given, not. The, they're not the Patriots. Right. Right. I can see that. Um, and and I really like the talent. I like the skill set, and I'm not worried about the hands. Which you know, you're worried about the hands. I'm not worried about the. I, I'm not. I'm not so much worried about the hands as I. I just haven't. It's one of those things where I haven't seen it yet. So, Kenny Walker or Josh Jacobs? 
Um, That's Walker all day. Yeah, I think it's close for me. I think I ha- I think I would I think I, I might would pretty take, much I think I might take Kenny just because I know where he's going to be at. I'd pretty year. much take Kenneth Walker over any of the older w- running backs. So on that list there, who's the first? Who's not the- probably not including CMC and Saquon Barkley, like, but anyone's older than those guys. You take you take Walker over Mixon. Yes. Hmm. I think I'm sick with Mixon there. I'm just I'm gonna reset the clock. That's fine. Back to 22, and I think he's every bit as good as Mixon is. Okay. Um, and you know Dalvin, sure. Yeah, I think Kamara, yeah. sure. Zeke, a hundred percent, because you know yeah. Lenny right now, sure. Yeah. Um. Derrick Henry for sure, Mixon sure, CMC we got to have a discussion about Chubb. It's hard to get rid of Chubb, but I think I think Kenneth Walker's kind of in the mold of Chubb. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, he's obviously not the size of Chubb, no. but same type of same type of player, pure runner right up there. I think yeah. with him. So you know, I, I'd be I'd I'm fine with swapping him out with any of those older guys right there. What about Swift? No, I'll keep Swift. Okay. What about Javante right now? I'll swap it out. Okay. See, I'm I'm not quite as high on Javante as as everybody else was, and I I think I think I think he's as talented as uh, Javante is. Walker is. I think Javante. I think Walker is as talented as Javante. Um, and look what we just saw. Look what we're seeing right now in Denver. Yeah. They're they're they're, they're not giving Dumpster it to any fire. one guy. They they're not they're not showing <laughs> the, the willingness. Murray they were right. They're not showing the willingness to ride the one guy, and that could that could change quickly. Yeah, um, but uh, so you know, I I think he's every bit as good as Javante. So yeah. So I'll would you still that. have if we were redrafting if we, if you were in a rookie draft today, would you still take Kenny Walker as your number two overall player? Yes. Hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna if I if I feel the reason that he is two and remains two is is again the state of running backs and if I feel like I can restock the cupboard on my running backs I'm always gonna hold that to a little bit higher regard than the receiver. Um, I think Drake's very good. Um, if Kenny Walker keeps doing what he's doing, he's gonna be a second or first round pick in startups next year. Easily, easily. Yeah, uh, you know, all of a sudden we'll be looking at Swifts and the Bijans and the. You know, I don't know which of these running backs, the new guard of running back, the new rookies are going to make it up there. But you could pretty much count on Bijan being right up there. JT, yeah. oh yeah, uh, yeah. Javante might I mean, slip I've seen down people a little bit. Are, Brees is going to be up there. Yeah, I've seen people already asking who the RB two in Dynasty is, and they're already saying Bijan. Yeah, I mean, Damian Pierce or Kenny Walker. Kenny Walker. All right, all right. Uh, let's go back to new on the uh, new on the ones and twos over here. We'll go to the moving screen here, and let's uh, let's shift gears here. You got any more Kenny Walker for me? No, I just the yeah. missed tackles forced are fine. I think he's a great runner. I'm just can, I'm a little concerned, I guess, about the ups about the about the overall upside. All right, fair enough. Not for me, but for you. No. Um, all right, let's go. Uh, Let's go to Wandell uh, Robinson here. Switching gears. Oh, that's only one game to see there. So yeah, on the player card there. Bear with me. A little slow on the uh, stream deck and the and the computer. That's why we keep Jay Wayne around. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, we'll get the mover and the player card on this one. Woo! Hachi <laughs> machi. Um. All right. So, like I said, really only one week yeah, to yeah. see from some from Wandell here. Yeah, um, you got any anything that we need to know? Ran ran around on eleven to fifteen snaps this past week. Um, did have three three missed tackles on three catches, so showing that shiftiness that we we saw at both in Nebraska and at Kentucky. Yep, um, a three for thirty seven in one stat line. Yeah, um, just twenty three percent of the snaps. Uh, but very targeted on those snaps, 36% of his routes run. Uh, so that was uh, yeah. courtesy of Andrew Erickson. And then I got another one from uh, Adam. I always mispronounce his last name. Levitan. Levitan. Uh, 15 to 64 snaps, 23%. Um, 10 in the slot, five out wide, 11 routes run, 32 of D- Danny Dimes dropbacks, so 34%. 
four targets, 14% share, uh, and then result in a three for 37 and one. Did have a drop on that one that he didn't catch. Mm -hmm. But as we, as we've talked about drops don't really matter. So, you know, what you're seeing with Wandell here, who was a favorite of mine to pick up in the waiver wire for redraft last week. If you watched the live show, I uh, didn't, you know, I said, don't spend the, don't spend the pick. Just don't spend the waiver priority. Just wait and then grab him. Cause there's probably yeah. a lot of people not thinking about him. Yep. Basically, you know, you kind of touched on it with Bellinger when we were talking about Pierce. The cupboard's bare over there. Oh, well, but, oh, except for fucking Tony, which they refuse to use. But I guess he's injured. Apparently he's injured now. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Galladay's injured. Slayton's Slayton. They're playing fucking Richie James and right. former all-world 13-year-old quarterback David Sills. <laughs> right, which is why you absolutely had to pick up Wandell. And, yeah, and you're just all all I was I watched this whole game. It was the CBS game locally here. Um, so it was one of the four three screens we had up. Um, all I was hoping for in this game was to see a few targets and for him to be tackled ever so gently or always running out of bounds because I just need him to, to come out of this game unscathed and healthy. Yeah. And I think you got yourself a nice little free piece here in redraft and yeah. in dynasty i think you're you're going to be able to get him into wide receiver three you know flex plays for you here just because i do think the cupboard's bare they're not they're obviously not scared to throw it to him if he's out there yeah uh, they're working him back in uh he's got this is he second round draft pick i believe so um so he's got got some capital for them yeah and like i said you know there's just nothing there and dynasty wise, you know, he's getting not, we don't know if Danny Dimes will be there next year. Maybe he gets not him. playing terrible, though. No. Again, maybe Danny. he'll get himself a little contract yeah. that just for a year or two for kind of cheap and see yeah. what they can do. Um, but he's working his way, integrating himself. Wandale, that is to be have, uh, you know, a handle on the on the system, whereas yeah. Richie James and and Sills probably aren't much going to be for sticking around or they'll be buried no. on the depth chart because they're the Giants are third in cap next year. They yeah. can kind of day ball can go do what he wants. Yeah. Just um, don't spend it on Kenny Galladay again. No, you can I can pretty much guarantee you Kenny's going to be gone. And, and, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with Tony, you know, I, a, a, a favorite of mine to take a shot on later yeah. in drafts because of what we saw in a very limited sample um yeah. but you know if, if he could get back out there i think it would be a lot of fun but right now you know wandell is the guy he looked good he scored a touchdown in a big spot mm -hmm. um so i mean wandell again a second round pick in in your fantasy drafts um well, not sure if he was actually a second round pick in the real draft but um you know I don't think you you're not we're probably not getting him for that cost. That, you know, I don't know if anybody would just swap you for that second that they paid at this point. I don't think they would. I don't know what the point of that would be right now. Right. Similar to the Alec Pierce thing, would you you would do that if you could though? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I yeah. Yes, he was second round pick by the way. Um yeah, I mean, if I could swap a two right uh, yeah. Would you rather have Wandell or Pierce? I think I'd stick with Wandale because I feel like the targets and yeah. the catches are coming. Then I they're agree. gonna be there's gonna be more He can kind of cement himself as target number one. Yeah, he could, for sure. For sure. Um could be could be like a Randall Cobbian. Shout out you, shout out Wildcats. So Tyler Lockett having a pretty nice season right no, now. Wandale easy. Wandale easy. Um, That's an easy, easy swap out. Easy. Okay. Okay. Um, just for resetting the age. Resetting the age. Okay. What if you're if you're winning right now and had a really good roster though, probably a little more hesitation just oh, because of the Sure. Right. But it might but if I could get if I could get Wanda down a little a little little sprinkle sprinkle on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um let's see if we can find something else decent here. Uh Tyler Boyd seems like probably an easy trade yeah, there. Agreed. I don't know. A little bit know. younger than Lockett, but just don't know what the... All right, so you went with Jacoby on Alec. Would you go Jacoby on Wandell? I think that one's... I think you got to go Wandell there. I think I agree. I think you have to. I think I agree. How about DPJ or Wandell? That definitely Wandell. Definitely Wandell and yeah. Nico. Yeah, Wandale. for sure. I yeah. would have it, yeah. Even um, though I think DPJ might be a nice little buy low here. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's been scoring points. Yeah. Um, well, it's like I said, it's either a Cooper week or a, or a DPJ week. Right. 
Um, how about CEH or Wandell? Mm. <laughs> I guess you, I mean, you almost kind of have to take CEH for the name value, but it seems like my head's telling me to take Wandale. Yeah, I mean, a, a straight up basically like a two plus a little for, for CEH right now seems like you're getting awfully low out of that thing. Yeah. So maybe I hang around and see what else I can do. But Tony Pollard or uh, Wandale. Uh, Wandale. I'll take Wandale too. Um, Daryl Henderson. Yeah, Wandale, Wandale for Wandale sure. For sh- and how? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um. All right, Kareem Hunt or Wandale? I think I'm sticking with. with I think Hunt I'd stick there. with Hunt there. Um, Just for the hope that he goes somewhere interesting next year. Gibson in the, in the oblivion Wandale, right now. Wandale. You're going Wandale that even, quick, huh? Oh yeah. Mm. Boy, that's that's hard for me to get out of. I think I just believe in the talent right now. I, I mean, I just, but I just I, I, got another year. I mean, if I could, but if if the Gibbs, if the Wandale, I mean, I think that's an easy Wandale right now. I mean, I mean, by the time we did the draft, uh, if you did rookie drafts late, B Rob was way over uh, Wandale. But would you? Would you? I Brian still think Robinson? I'm sticking with Wandale there. Yeah, not believing. It's not that I don't believe. It's just that the 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 Washington offense is not great. I mean, Robinson has been over hasn't been overly efficient this far either. One game, one, two games. Was it two games? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I guess he came back and then yeah, you're right. You and right. and the command and, and and the commie said that they that it was a mistake not having a little more Gibson Gibson at all. Probably going to be a little dirty over there for the next year. Plus, Rivera probably doesn't make it yeah. after this season. Uh, yep. Now, do they do anything at the RB position? Maybe not. No, I don't. Um, I, I, I don't think there's a need to bring any to bring in like a Bijan. But I mean, they could bring in a pass catching running back with a little bit more, a little bit more wiggle than Robinson has. Robinson's a fine running back, but he's he's your he's more of a yeah. And we need to give Robinson uh, yes, some games here to, to figure it out. But the Commanders aren't darn doing themselves any favors with the O line. They got some injuries and they weren't great coming into the season. Plus, now you're down Carson. You're on to Taylor Heineke. Yeah, and um, probably Sam Howell here soon. Maybe. I mean, Heineke could... I could see Heineke gutting out a win or two and I, just yeah. holding it down because that's seemingly what he kind of does. But I think that if, if Old Riverboat's smart, he plays Howell to try and save his job by saying, Howell, I'm playing a rookie here. Yeah. Got to think about that. Possibly, possibly. Saving the old job scheme. You got anything else on uh, on Wandell here? Should see some should see a, an uptick in targets and usage going forward. So definitely yeah. still a buy low if you can. Yeah, I agree. I think you still got to try to get in there, um, try to find a way to get some Wandell because I think, like I said, I think he could really establish himself as the number one target yep. in this offense. And then even if they did go out and get a bigger guy, bigger name guy, bigger a guy that's a locked in number one, I think he could he could definitely he's going to hang around. A nice compliment be, should play a lot of slot. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I like I like the idea of trying to buy uh, Wandell Robinson moving forward. All right, let's close this uh, show out with two tight ends. Uh, let's go, Greg Dulcich. Dulcich. Um, obviously, didn't play a whole lot because uh, he's been on IR, and yep. then he comes in this game. Basically, I don't know if if he's the reason that Albert O's inactive. Sure would make a lot of sense if um, not a quinky dink. But then he comes right out there, uh, gets gets a touchdown, got another target in the red zone. Yep. Um, and, you know, changes the game up where they've been a little murky at tight end, putting yeah. a lot of guys out there. They still had some bunch of different guys out. Seemingly a lot of guys that kind of look like Dolchich. <laughs> um, Beck and Tomlinson both yep. kind of look like yeah. him. Um, White guys with long hair. Yeah, they got a type. Um, Andrew Beck too. Right. Um so what's your thoughts on on Dulcich moving forward? He was a, a guy that made our trade targets early on. We yeah. liked him. They were struggling at the tight end position. We're we looking thought, pretty looking we pretty, thought, we're looking pretty smart right thought, now. We thought something like this might happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you pat yourself on the back and then when you have Isaiah Spiller above Wandell and Al, you know, Alec Pierce, you you say, eh, it wasn't the best. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. Yeah. Um 
We can't so, win them all. Otherwise, we otherwise we'd be GMs. Yeah, I've, I wouldn't even have a show. I would just be like, whatever. I win all the time. <laughs> exactly. I'm telling you, idiots. My secrets. Exactly. But we're here to have some fun. So, what do you think about Dulcich? So, I think the forward? one thing that I saw on the PFF article was that uh, Dulcich played nearly all of the eleven personnel snaps, but s- rarely saw the field on the other personnel snaps. So that's interesting that on a team that's doesn't run a, doesn't run a ton of eleven personnel and. Who knows what's going on with Wilson now? I mean, he says he's going to play this week, but he's just a shell of what he was b- yeah, prior to this year. Not great. Um, don't know what we said. In, in the article, they said he could be Robert Tanyan on a, on a worse offense. Yeah. they. Uh, Wilson missed him on a, on a third down that he, he ran a, a shell, a little cross, and stopped right in front of him. I don't know why he didn't hit him. He could have had another little catching a, and a pickup to extend a drive <coughs> excuse me uh but yeah i mean would you would you be given the two for dulcich right now it would have to tight be end tight end premium, premium. it have to you're, be tight end premium you're down with something like that i like it have to be like it it have to be like i'm like a i'm like a five and one yeah. six and oh team yeah better team i'd rather give up two thirds you trade Dawson Knox for Dulcich? No. I would. You think? Uh, he's the most overrated tight end in the league. Really? I don't think he's fine. I just don't think he gets enough attention to be warranted any of the accolades. That I, I don't think either guy him. can be in your starting lineup right now. No, but I would, I'd rather reset the clock and take the chances. Not that Knox is that old, but I'd rather... Yeah. Fine. Um, I'd rather take the chances of, of this guy. What you're looking for is somebody who can establish themselves as a go-to target in an offense. And I'll know. take the sexy offense over the over, over the young. Right. And I, but I, and I think that's why Knox is perennially slightly overrated is because the offense is so sexy. But it's like, really, you can only start him when he scores a touchdown. Yeah. Um, whereas in premium, you're looking for the sure. targets. You're yeah. looking you, in order to make it worth the up truck up up charge on some tight ends yeah. they have to be getting the the target volume and i'm hoping that maybe dulcich could slide in there so you know i would i'd be down with trading uh somebody like that for him um let's see let's look at some other tight ends to see you know would you trade Ertz for dulcich i mean obviously if you're a winning roster you're probably hanging on to Ertz. Ertz is the only tight end to have six tight end one games so far this year yeah and he's been he's been rock solid yeah uh, th- in your lineup but I and think now you know Hollywood. Yeah, but but Nuke's back this week. Nuke is back, but um, oh, don't forget about Robbie Anderson. Oh, ho, ho. Rondell Moore has been you know ascending yeah. a little bit. Yeah, uh, so that's nice to see. Um, how about Gerald Everett in a three? Uh, give me Dulcich. Give me D- uh, Dulcich. Yeah. How about your boy Tyler Higby? If I, I, if, I could, you, if I could pull the wool over yeah, somebody's eyes, yep, I'd do that in a second. I would second. do that in a second, too, because guess what? Van Jefferson's coming back after the bye. How about uh, how about Joku? Nah, I'll stick with Njoku. Yeah, it seems like you kind of have to, for what I was just talking about. Maybe he could yeah. you know, get the targets with, with Winston yeah. tied to that. Um, Winston? Or uh, Watson, rather. Um, Evan Ingram and a, and a three? Yeah, definitely Dulcich. Dulcich. Yeah, it, w- is Ingram even worth a third right now? Uh, you can't start him. I mean, you you pro- there's probably a lot of people starting him, and I mean it's not the worst of the worst. Ugh, yikes! He's had a he had a goose egg in there, but it's, I think other than that, it's been okay. It's been okay, okay, um, but not great. Uh, not great. Only, only averaging seven point nine points a game, seven point eight. Um, Irv Smith. Let me keep Irv for now. How about Gasecki? Because there's no there's no real love on Gasecki right now, but we know he's a good player. He's just in yeah. the wrong offense. Caught two touchdowns this past week. He sure did. Um, so he's probably going to go somewhere else. I think I would swap. I'd, I'd take Gasecki. I think I would too in the hopes that he goes somewhere fun. <laughs> right. I'm just going to gamble a little bit. Yeah. But we know it's there. I, oh, for sure. At least I, I think it's there. Um, all right. Anything else on on Dulcich here? You got you got any other players you want to put up against him? Should have thrown his player card up here. Whoop. Um, if you can get a mid second for if you can get a mid twenty three second or Dulcich 
for him? If yeah, who what would you rather have the, the mid second or Dulcich? Yeah, you know, like you said, to kick this off, you know, it's relative to how I think my team is 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 going. Yeah, on a good team, I'd be more apt to do it. On a bad team, maybe I just hold that. What if you're a middling team? Let's say you're three and three. I'd try to do the two three swap. I know that's a cop out. I try to get the two, get back to three. Yeah. Um. Now, as as the um, I would probably hang on to the the two. Yeah. Yeah, you probably should, but. I I in premium I like kind of that like taking the shots on the tight ends. I mean tight end looks bare next year. Yeah, and I like I like taking the shots on the tight ends and trying to get them before they really ascend. I mean two's usually like right at the threshold when I'll stop trying to buy them. Um, you know who's the 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 Tennessee tight end uh, from Maryland? Oh, Quanquo. Yeah, like he's a guy that I oh I, put I was on picking him up in the fifth bunch round of benches. fifth round tight end premiums um, all but day. Dulcich was a guy who was kind of hot and then cooled off in the fantasy. Yeah, because he got hurt. Um, so I, I actually ended up with a decent amount of him. I actually, I ended up with Dulcich and Bellinger on a team. Nice. All right. Well, that, anything else on Dulcich? I think we hit Dulcich pretty hard there. All right. Let's go uh, hit you with a little moving as I. Old, old. Let's see, we got an old Danny B here. All right, last one for the night. Uh, Daniel Bellinger, uh, looking, you know, okay through here. You know, yep. probably the most value of of. Uh, oop. Is he the? Is he the? Is he the tight end? Is he the tight end one right now for rookies? Rookie tight end one right now. He's got to be, even though McBride was was up there for me, pretty yeah, hot and heavy. Talk about you know. doing nothing so far. Been hurt and hurts is good. So yeah. I mean, he kind of was suspected. Not the hurt part, but yes, the behind hurts um, part behind was Ertz suspected. Part. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you got it. You got to think so. Bellinger, if you if you scooped him up, has been. Uh, a Especially nice, you got him early. If you got him early, you probably paid a fourth. Right. Yeah. I mean, most drafts that I was in, even late, uh, especially on the non-expert side of things, um, he was still hanging around. You Just know, picking him up in the late third and some tight end premium leagues. Right. A good bit. Um, I, I think in the last draft I did, I might have at, spent two dollars on Brevin Jordan instead of maybe the two dollars on Bellinger, which was a little bit of a bummer. Oof. Um, but I do have some other good tight ends in that league, so that kind of sticks. Brevin Jordan was just that athletic. Sure. At one point, he was like the number one tight end recruit in the nation. Um. But has shout out to Miami anything right now. And Bellinger uh, would be a lot more fun to have on that team coming off the a show. Five targets, five receptions, 38 yard game uh, and a touchdown. Like you said, not a whole lot else there um, in New York and, and could yeah. really establish himself as well. So do you have anything on on Bellinger? He's been the highest graded pass catcher for per PFF of the Giants so far this year. Excellent. So he's catch, playing well, catch the ball. Um, his snap percentage has in, snap and route percentage has increased over the last few weeks. He was a little banged up too, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. He was on the pup, I think, but I think he was taken off the pup before the season started. Right so I think he's played every. I think he's played in every game so far this year. Yeah, uh, he might not have played week one. Uh, no, he had forty eight percent of the snaps. Okay, so, so he just didn't nothing, get any nothing going on. Okay, okay, but he's now playing all third downs. Um, he played nearly every snap this past week. And like we've been talking about with Wandale, the Giants have Tom, Dick, and Harry out there trying to catch passes. So, so I mean, he's going to get targets because he's shown that he can catch the ball. Right. So, and he's he, six foot five. He's so. big, pretty athletic. Yeah. And they have, I mean, if, if you got Wandale, Tony, and Richie James out there who yeah. are all. You need some size. Marcus, yeah. <laughs> Marcus Johnson's been getting some burn. Yeah. Uh, for, is he on the Giants, I believe? Yes. Um, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, you know, Sills is the other kind of tall yeah. de facto guy out there. Uh, so, yeah. Bellinger should be, and he is showing uh, that he is starting to assert uh, some okay usage here. Probably not really in your starting lineup at any point. I right started now. him last week in tight end premium. Well, la t. I was getting, I was ravaged on buys and injuries, so yeah. I started four tight ends in that league. Would you give up the two for Bellinger? <coughs> yeah, I think I'm giving up the. I'm thinking I'm giving up the two for Bellinger. I'm do, I'm pulling the trigger there. Yeah. I don't. Know, I like I like Dulcich a little bit more, but I I, I don't know why. Um, that's not a great answer. So. 
I'll pro- I, I, I'll, I'll do the same. I'll, I'll give up the two. Like I said, I like I like to try to get a hold of my my tight ends. I'm, I'm okay spending a little bit of a capital. I'd rather and, overpay and losing... slightly in the rookie draft than have to try and pay for them. Right. That's, if they come up, that's kind of what I was saying about like I like to try to get them a little earlier. And yeah. And I'm okay spending the second and cap it off at a second. And you know, I've bought. You know, I've bought Dawson Knox's and the Janus and it not really work out that great. And, yeah. you know, but I've also bought uh, Darren Waller's and, and Goddard's and all those guys before they really broke out. And yeah. that, that has worked out really well. So, you know, it's something I do like to do in tight end premium. I like to do that because there is a, an advantage when you yeah, can, definitely when you can find that guy. Those late thirds, um, fourth round picks, just throw those dart throws on some tight ends. Right. Which is, you know, again, in the, I agree um, in the rookie drafts. You know that's the strategy. After I get into the third or fourth round, unless there's guys that really stick out, I'll 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 keep stabbing on those guys. And then if somebody that I like starts to maybe give a little shine, uh, like Bellinger, who hasn't really necessarily this was his best week, but hasn't really emerged. I'm not going to say Bellinger was my sit here and lie and say Bellinger was necessarily my guy, uh, but you know here maybe you could lure him away from somebody for a second. But um, you know some people would snap that up and some people are going to just be like I'm going to keep it tight with my tight ends yeah it might not be a great week to try and buy Bellinger right. you could probably wait another week he'll go back to his his normal you know three targets three for three for for 33 you know still not the worst yeah um, but you know I could, he's definitely a guy that, that should be growing a role as as he moves forward and Daniel Jones hasn't been absolutely awful uh, the offensive line is fine Saquon Barkley's been great yeah I think I, I think I saw Andrew Thomas was like the number one Rated left tackle so far this year. Yeah. Um, any any trades that you would have not done for, um, like, would you you, you still trade in Gasecki? Oh, I think that one's closer for me. Um, man. I guess I got. I guess I have to take Bellinger if I could get like Gasicki and a third. I would do that. I would do Gasicki, but I would need Ooh, some. You're getting plus on the Gasicki side. I would need. I would need a little sprinkle. Ooh. Uh. I mean. I mean. I have no idea where where Gasicki's going to be next year. He could yeah. be. Yeah. He could be literally anywhere. He could be on the How Chiefs about, next year. I'll take Gasicki still. How about Fan? I'm still taking Fan. I can't quit Fan. I don't know why. Yeah. But I'm still taking Fan. Still super young, super athletic. Got switched up on teams. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm with you there. Same thing I said with Irv. I think I think he's worth hanging on to for another year. I yeah. I I'd probably swap Irv out. Um, okay. For me personally, um, and then Joku's still hanging on yeah. for you though. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. After three, four, five years of hanging on to Joku, I'm gonna yeah. hang on a little longer. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, and no, no, uh, T.J. Hawkinson. No, Just no, we're, no. We're holding fast. Yeah, for sure. Right? We're not yeah. scared, and obviously, you know, we don't even bring Kyle Pitts up into this. We're just what about? We got Kyle Pitts. Relax. Hang uh, on. It stinks. Just, just double checking here. You're, you're taking Fryermuth over Bellinger. Oh, correct. For sure. Okay. Okay. Just making sure. Just making sure. Fryermuth wasn't hot and heavy on it necessarily, but I did get a little hot and heavy this off season, and I'm all in. I like. I like. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> the Muth. The Muth. We are. You got Kaseki and the Muth. I'll take them both. Take all the Penn State tight ends. Brenton Strange. Is he coming? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Not that good. Um, and we're, we're taking Big Bobby T? No. Bellinger. Bellinger. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Agreed. Agreed. Um, any, any, any way that you would trade, since he's in the two category, Pierce or Wandell? No, I'm sticking with the sticking bro- with both yeah, of those guys, yeah. right? I mean, unless it's in like that Patreon league, if it's at two, two point two point two points for tight ends, gets a little spicier. It does then. get a bit spicy. Gets a bit spicier then. All right. I think yeah, but I think you still got to stick with the with the with the wide receivers. I, I agree. Is there any? Is there? Uh, is there a Jacoby Myers that you would trade? No, no. You're, no. you're sticking with Jacoby. Um, let's see here. Maybe maybe the Nico DPJs of the world uh-huh. I could I could consider. Yeah. Joshua Palmer. Had a great week on Monday. But yeah, I, but go. also but uh, uh, Sertan, yeah, Sertan just locks up the wide receiver ones. Yeah. He could go. See you later. Yeah, for sure. Um how about Rondell? More. I was ascending <sighs> a little bit here. I meant to bring him up a little earlier when we were talking about a couple of those other guys. Probably paid a second for Rondell. Yeah. Maybe you want to 
may not be a bad time to cash out on Rondale because, I mean, if if Hollywood only misses a month, yeah. I, I, I don't think – I think I'm going to hold Rondale in that situation I'm and definitely. try and sell him in two weeks. I'm holding and just holding, I think. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm – I think if I have Rondale, I might try and sell him in a couple of weeks when he's he could be popping off. But yeah, we'll see. I have more, the only roster I have him on. I'm trying to tank in, so I'm probably gonna hang on to Rondale. Yeah, I'm, I'd, I'd hang on to Rondale. All right, let's uh, let's wrap this thing up. Let's. Uh, I gotta find the end music here. Uh, we we'll go back to over here. Bear with me here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Oh, here we go. All right. I did it. I found it. We appreciate you guys sticking with us as we're uh, as we're rolling through this these hard times without our audio engineer. Um, but he is uh, needing a day. So we, uh, we went and got our and did our thing. Oh, yeah. Nice. We did the damn this thing. First time we've uh, just just you and I. Oh, yeah. Like first date. Went you off. and I. Went all right. Um, be sure to. Uh, like, subscribe, comment below if you listen on the podcast. Five star review. Uh, we really send those over. We'll get another T-shirt drawing again coming up real soon. Yeah, Jay Wayne wasn't here, so one more week. Yeah, we'll, we'll get them all in. Five star review. Any social media platform, um, and you can uh, enter in to get a free T-shirt. We're going to do two drawings this next go around, so get those in. Um, and again, we really appreciate y'all. We'll be back Monday for the live stream. Uh, nine nine thirty kind of depends. No, yeah, no, that's not what y'all open bar nine thirty ish. Yeah. We'll call it 9.15. Yeah. We'll see you there. We're hitting some recaps, and then uh, we'll be back with then a regular old show on Wednesday. Uh, so catch y'all. Appreciate y'all. Peace.